are now in the ninth week of our quarantine, our, our shelter in place order here in Metro Detroit. We have seen a lot of different videos about how to properly wash our hands to make sure that we are staying healthy. I wanted to add one more video to this idea, um, but instead of talking about how to hygienically wash our hands, we're going to talk about how to Jewishly wash our hands. So this ritual is called Natilat Yadayim. It means literally to lift up our hands, and we're going to talk about why. But we're going to run through how to do this. So you are normally going to see this. We do this any time we eat bread. So when we have a meal that has bread in it, we're supposed to be doing Natilat Yadayim. We're supposed to be traditionally and ritualistically washing our hands. There is also a tradition of washing our hands immediately when we wake up in the morning. So the first thing that we want to do is remove any jewelry that we might have on our hands that would serve as a um, anything that would be interrupting the flow from water to our skin. So if you have a ring or any other jewelry on your hand, the one exception to this is that if you have uh, a ring that you always keep on, never take off, then you can leave it on your hand, but that would have to be something that you never ever take off, not to do dishes, um, not in any kind of context. It must be almost completely on all the time. After we removed our jewelry, we are going to use a vessel. This is a Natila Yadayan cup, but you can use any cup. Um, but we need to make sure that we have something to pour the water in instead of using the water directly from the faucet. We're going to fill it up. And we're going to lift with our right hand, switch to our left hand. Whenever we do anything in Judaism, there's a couple of exceptions, but we start with the right side of our body, which is coming from the place of holiness. Yamin, uh, the right side is, is equated with the holier side of our body. People who are left-handed, I apologize, I didn't make this up. So once we have it in our left hand, we pour over our right, one, two, three, switch hands, and do the same over our left, one, two, three. You go ahead and put your cup now, and this is where the name actually comes from. The tilat yadai means to raise up. So not only do we wash our hands, we raise our hands up, and we say the bracha, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kiddishanu B'Mitzvotam V'Tzivanu Al Natilat Yadayim. After you've completed saying the bracha, you can put your jewelry back on. The tradition here, the minhag here, is to not speak until you have then made motzi, the, the, the bracha, the blessing over the bread that we're about to eat. The reason we do this is in Judaism, we have an idea that we don't interrupt blessings. So since these two blessings are connected one to the other, we don't say the bracha over motzi without saying the tila yadayim, they are considered to be interconnected. Therefore, saying anything or speaking in between those blessings would interrupt those blessings. So therefore, after we say the bracha for Natila Yadayim, we don't speak again until we say the bracha over the bread, motzi. And like so many things in Judaism, the reason that we do this is we are recreating an ancient ritual. The Kohanim, the priests in the temple and in the Mishkan, used to ceremoniously wash their hands before doing any kind of the sacrificial service, any um, part of the temple service. So especially when we are observing Shabbat dinner and we are kind of recreating that idea of a temple sacrifice, the two halot being two offerings, we kind of put ourselves in the, in the altar, in the mishkan, in the temple, and we do the exact same thing. We kind of emulate the kohanim. We wash our hands ceremoniously, uh, ritualistically, as if we are approaching the Beit HaMikdash, as if we are entering the temple. So I hope this video was helpful. Keep washing your hands hygienically. Try to start washing your hands ritualistically and everyone stay safe out there.